What's up? My name is Triple Shoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how to set up SSH key authentication in Debian 11, though it should work for previous operating systems as well, as well as similar Linux distros. Regardless, why would you want this? Well, usually you'll need to log into your account with a username and password, which isn't necessarily the most secure. Instead, you should have a private and public key as an extra step to connect to your server. Do note that you will need to back these up somewhere as losing them will deny you access to your server. It's a much more secure way of logging in and making sure that things are a lot more secure. Of course, we'll need a way to SSH into our server. For me, I'm simply using Visual Studio Code over here. You can see I'm on root. I'll SU into my account and there we are. Let's go ahead and set this up. Let's start by creating a SSH key pair. For this, I'll be using RSA 2048, but of course you can use whatever you'd like here. For this, you can use something like putty, which is probably one of the simplest things, or you can use the command line option, which is SSH hyphen keygen. If you're going with the command line option, open up a command line or terminal, SSH hyphen keygen space hyphen T RSA space hyphen B 2048 and hit enter. Then we can generate a private public key pair. You can hit enter to choose this folder, the default, or you can type in your own. For me, I'll save it in C users techno SSH test, then ID RSA. We'll need to enter a passphrase, which I'll do now, re-enter it, and assuming the folder exists, it should be created. I already have some here, so I'll test and run the commands again. There we go. When it's run, you'll see a pretty picture as well as some information on it, and inside of here, we'll have our private and public key pairs. However, if you don't have that command line option available to you, you can download Putty, which you'll find linked in the description down below. I'll hit start, type in Putty Gen, which is one word, open it up, and now we have a Putty key generator. I'll choose RSA 2048 and generate. We'll move our mouse randomly over the blank area here to generate a random key, and when it's done, we'll see all of the information here. All we need to do is save public key, and we can give it a name, such as say pub and and private, we can either save it without a password or we can enter a key phrase here and save private key. Then opening up the folder, you'll see this is what they saved as pub and test.ppk, the ppk file being the private key. Awesome. So whatever method you choose, you'll need to open up the public key, which is the much shorter file. To show you the minimal amount, it should look something like this. Hit control A, control C, and now that we've copied our entire RSA key, all we need to do is create a folder that we'll be saving this in on our server to make sure that we can connect to it. So for this, I'll run sudo mkdir tilde slash dot ssh. And after doing that, we'll run sudo nano tilde slash dot ssh slash authorized underscore keys. Of course, if you don't want to edit this straight away or you receive an error, you can use touch instead just to create the file, hitting enter. We're now editing this file. All we need to do is simply paste the public key in here that we copied earlier, control S and control X to save and close. Now, all we need to do is make sure that the folder has the correct permissions. So sudo chmod 700 space hyphen capital R space tilde slash dot SSH enter. Then sudo chmod 600 tilde slash dot SSH slash authorized keys as such and hit enter once more. Then when we're done with that, we should be able to log into our server with our SSH private key. For this, I'll give you an example through putty here. I'll click load if we have our session saved. Otherwise, I'll need to enter the host name here, port 22 SSH, and then head down to the SSH tab under connection here. So I'll enter the host name here, give it a name for save sessions, I'll call this say H, and then click save when you're done. Then we can click it and choose load. So putting in the correct IP address, I'll head down to SSH under connection, I'll expand it, and I'll head into auth. Then I'll click browse next to private key for authentication, I'll navigate across to the file, which for me is saved here. I'll need to change it to all files as this one I didn't generate through putty, select it and open. Then we'll head back to session once more and click save. When you're done, click open and a new putty terminal should open. I'll need to accept the security before I go ahead and move this window around. There we go. I've right clicked, so I've confused things a little bit. Let's try and reconnect to this. To do so, simply select the saved session here, click load and then open. There we go. Then you should be asked to log in as, simply enter your username, then your password and poof, you should be into things as you'd had a hope. However, for me, I'm using Visual Studio Code here and I'm using the remote SSH tool here, this little extension. For me, I'll need to hit F1, remote SSH, config, and open the configuration file.
file located here. Now, inside of here, what we need to do is add a server. So for me, I've called it host, followed by the name of the server hosting company, host name, which will be the IP address, then user, followed by the username you'll be logging in with. Finally, identity file as such, followed by the path to the file that you'll be logging in with. This is the private key. If it has any spaces in it, simply make sure to surround it in quotation marks, otherwise it should be fine. After saving it and closing that file, I'll hit F1, remote SSH, connect to host, and I'll select it here, in my case Hertznam. Then we'll be asked to enter the passphrase for our SSH key, which I'll do here, and after doing so, we'll be logged in. I can open a new terminal, and as you can see, techno at techno. Awesome. Things worked exactly as we had hoped. Let's go ahead and disable the root user login as well as password logins, so you'll need the private key to connect to our server. All we need to do for this is sudo nano slash etc slash ssh slash ssh d underscore config and hit enter. Now we're editing the ssh config file here. All we'll do is hit control w to search and I'll search for permit root hit enter and it'll be taken down to permit root login. Change this from yes to simply no. And I'll also hit control W. This time we'll be searching for password auth, one word, password authentication. I'll change this from yes to simply no. And I'll remove the hash before it. There we go. Heading back up to permit root login, we can also enable strict modes. And more preferably, let's lower the max number of retries to save for. So let's go ahead and control S to save, control X to close. And now we need to restart SSA. So I'll run sudo service restart ssh restart and hit enter. Now we should be disconnected from our server. I'll close this terminal and reconnect to my server. And we've now connected back to it. Awesome. So new terminal. Cool. So we can still su into root as long as we know the right password. But let's try and connect to our server with a password or even into the root account. For this, I'll pull up just a command prompt. I'll run ssh my username or let's say root at followed by my IP address of my server. Then I'll hit enter. As you can see, permission denied public key. Let's go ahead and try again, this time with my username, say techno. Once more, permission denied public key. Awesome. So things are working exactly as we had hoped. Once again, it's a good idea to back up these files as you will need to keep them around to log into your system without needing to reset it or of course have physical access to it. So anyways, that's really about it for this relatively short video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.